Hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, it's LaShonda. Hi, LaShonda. Where's she been? Hi, LaShonda. Hey, Anthony. How are you this morning, Anthony? Mr. Clayton. Good morning. Good morning. LaShonda been uh, set tripping. I know, right? <laughs> been set tripping on us, huh? <laughs> Well, good morning, everyone, as you all join in this morning. <laughs> I know, I'm just messing. <laughs> oh, no, she's not. No, I'm not. I'm <laughs> John is a not. very busy woman. Good morning, Kendra. Good morning, Tamika. I reloaded my periscope. You know what? I had to do that a couple of times, too. Love you, too. She said she love you. What up? But, um, I have a lot of people, What's LaShonda, oh, what a lot up? of people are having to do that. Um, they say that they, at one point they, they're getting the notifications, then all of a sudden the notifications just stop. And they have to unfollow and then refollow. And yeah. Good morning, Mike. Mike B, what up? <laughs> good morning, good morning. Glad to have you and Miss Tamika this morning. Still praying for you guys. Love y'all so much. Good morning, Tanisha. Good morning, good morning. Look. Mama. What? Where are you supposed to be at? Mm. Where are you supposed to be? Are you bleeding? Are you hurt? You all about to fall off? Oh, shit. Go to the room. I'll get it. I'll get it when I'm done. We'll be done. Hold on. Give me a second. We out of parent because the kid's out of school. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> good morning, good morning. But good morning, y'all. It is the first day of summer <laughs> in Rapids Parish, and i um, so excited about that. Can't you tell? I'm so excited. <laughs> but um, I pray that you all had a great morning. You guys are having a great morning, that you did your declarations and your decrements this morning, that favor and love is flowing your way, that joy and the peace that surpasses all understanding is overflowing in your heart. That you're spreading love and you're giving love as you're getting love. Amen. And that all is well where you are. Amen. Amen. Pastor Roddy. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Just going to give it a few more moments for more people to join and for Pastor to um, come on back. But um, um, I am almost... I am almost at 300,000 hearts on Facebook, I mean on Periscope. Yay! Almost 300,000. Yay! These Periscopes are actually working. <laughs> so thank y'all for the hearts. Um, continue to heart me up, as uh, Elder K says. She said, heart her up. Continue to heart me up as you guys are um, sitting there at your desk or in your home and um Watch and watching this periscope, just tap the screen and release hearts. And uh, <laughs> my little wild child, yes, yeah, sorry. Uh -huh. and just tap the screen and release hearts. If there's anything that we say or do that gives you an aha moment, and feel please feel free to share um, your 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 opinions or what you're believing as we go through our periscope. Amen. All right, I bet. Amen. So this morning, duty calls. Parenting never stops. <laughs> This morning, Pastor Ronnie actually came up with the um, title for this Periscope, and he titled it Accountability, and then I added the one for another. So the title of this Periscope this morning is Accountability. 14 people watching. Oh, wow. The, the title of this Periscope is Accountability, uh, one for another. Amen. So I'm going to let Pastor Ronnie start because he was the one that initiated. What up? <laughs> Okay, so I'll tell you what happened. So every morning I get up, uh, I get up every morning, I pray at five o'clock. And sometimes when I pray, I, he'll, he'll give me something. And um, sometimes I get back in the bed. But what happened this morning was I, I prayed and I got back in the bed. And when I got back in the bed, it woke me up. Mm -hmm. And um, when I wake up, I try to go to my word because I, I figure like if he waking me up, it's for a reason. 
Uh, and just 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 a, a quick side note, y'all too. I just want to make sure. I just want to um, share this with y'all. Those that are having a hard time with uh, reading the Bible, or um, or just trying to find a way to get started, because sometimes the Bible can be confusing. Mm -hmm. um, for me, anytime I get up and I'm like, okay, what is it? I always go to Proverbs. Whatever the the, the day is in that month, like today is the 18th. Um, if I can't, if I'm not reading something already, like I'm like I'm not in Romans or in the Old Testament somewhere, in Chronicles or something like that. Um, every time I get up like that, or he wakes me up, I'll go straight to Proverbs. Yeah. So I w I would strongly suggest that anybody that's watching this Periscope right now, man, if you're having a hard time reading the Bible or you just want to get started, and you don't know how to get started or where to get started. Mm -hmm. Proverbs, man, it's 31 books of Proverbs, and um, you can find one for every day of the week. But every day of the month, day of the month. yeah, right on. <laughs> so. Um, I just seen that post. All right, but what happened was I went to Proverbs this morning. It was Proverbs eighteen, um, verses one and two. Let me get on, pull it up real quick because I want to read it to y'all. Um, Proverbs eighteen one and two. Okay. Uh, Proverbs eighteen one and two says this: A man who isolates himself seeks his own desire and rages against all wise judgment. Verse 2, a fool has no delight in understanding, but in expressing his own heart. I thought that that was pretty thick. Now, keep in mind, I want to read it one more time. It says, a man who isolates himself seeks his own desire. He rages against all wise judgment. What is that? What, when, it, it, when I seen it, <coughs> it, just, it just leaped out to me. Because, again, people who isolate themselves only want whatever it is they want for themselves which means you don't want any kind of accountability hmm. you don't want anybody checking you 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 don't want anybody to, to recognize and say hey you know what today you in your feelings yeah or today you know what you hey man you having a hard time today man like what's going on with you you don't want that it just feels good being where you are at the moment and that's why the Bible says in Solomon, why is king never live? According to the Bible, says a man, and this is him in observation. He's looking back over his life and he's writing this down. So with him looking back over his life, he said this, a man who isolates himself, seeks his own desire, and he rages against wise judgment. He doesn't want wise judgment. He wants whatever he wants at the moment. And you got to be careful of that, man. One of the things that, that especially today, that we uh, that we'll be... Um, talking about uh, on this periscope and also tonight at bible study you want to be at bible study tonight man because it's going to be off the chain but why is it so so especially prevalent now that there are so many christians that have a desire to be isolated yeah man you got you got to understand that that's a trick from that's a trick of the enemy if you are perfectly healthy perfectly fine doing well living okay nothing's wrong with you physically nothing's wrong with you mentally there's nothing going on with your kids and you make a willful decision to not be in the house of the lord for whatever reason that is a trick from the enemy yeah. he wants you to be isolated and again what does the what does the bible say about he a man who isolates himself seeks his own desire he rages against all wise judgment you're seeking your own desire Whatever you're feeling at that moment, if we live our life by our feelings, how much, how much, how up and down would our lives be? Yeah. If we, if we live our, if we live our lives every day by how we feel, how will we ever be able to provide for our kids? Because I'm quite sure a lot of y'all watching this Periscope right now do not feel like being at work. Hmm. And it is, it is amazing to me the press that comes in when it comes to coming to your job which is a resource as opposed to going to your local church or your fellowship, which is the source. Yeah. And we say, we say uh, good things and crazy things like, um, well, I don't, you don't have to be in a church to, uh, to praise God. You don't have to be in a church. That is an excuse. That is it's absolute. It's just an excuse. It's a reason for you to accommodate your feelings at the moment. It's a reason for you to, 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 to be in yourself and not have to press, push or work to do anything. But you want to you want to reap the same benefits of the person that is pressing to be into the house. Yeah. So you got to check that. Go ahead, Pastor. 
I mean, I know there are moments in our life where we just want to be uh, to ourselves. We, we just want to be alone. But you have to recognize when those times happen. Like, if those times happen right before you come to church, like, that's the only... It happens on Wednesday nights when it's time to come to prayer. All of a sudden, at Wednesday, when you get off of work, you are just beyond tired, the tiredest you've ever felt, and you just don't feel like doing nothing else. You know, but Monday night you was fine. Tuesday you was fine. Thursday you was fine. Friday, we yeah, have everybody fine on Friday. Mm. You know, or on Sunday morning. You know what I'm saying? It's like if you find you have to you have to evaluate the situation. If you find that the only time that you are actually super duper tired is when it's time to go to church, then that might be the enemy putting more on you so that to get you in that headspace so that you don't go. But then on the flip side of that, us as the body of Christ. It is on us to reach out like we can see patterns. A lot of times we see patterns in people's lives and we don't call it out. Absolutely. We don't say anything about it. We just be like, uh, you know, I don't want to offend. And I'm speaking from experience. I'm not talking about nobody else. I'm talking about myself. Yeah. I don't want to offend them or I don't want to, you know, them. Oh, my, 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 my spirit ain't right. So I'm going to just yeah, stay so home. Gonna, I ain't going to, I'm not going to. No, you know, so we don't call the, th the patterns out that we see. We don't call the things out that we see, which in essence is us. Um, I'm dropping the ball because we're hit, we're told to hold one one another accountable. Absolutely, the Bible says to call it out. If you if it's a hindrance to that person's spiritual walk, you know we're called to do that in love. Amen. You know what I'm saying. So the only time I wouldn't call or say <laughs> we shouldn't say anything about it is when we know we're coming from a place of I'm mad about it. Why you wasn't there? You need to be there. You that prayer that we was praying was for you. That sermon that Pastor yeah. preached was for you. You should have been there yeah. if you're coming from that place then keep your mouth shut absolutely you know because what you're gonna, you're, you whatever you're presenting to people yeah. you want to present it in a way that they receive it and do something about it as opposed to receiving it mm -hmm. and, and feeling condemned yeah. or, or or feeling like they like they want to fight you after you got through mm -hmm. talking because our approach to things can be can be the difference between uh, good or bad, right or wrong, yes. up or down or whatever, mm -hmm. I approach to it. Mm -hmm. But this whole accountability thing, man, is is so much deeper. Yeah. Like Pastor said, you know, when you start seeing uh, patterns or the only time that you get tired or, or whatever is when it's time for you. A lot of times, man, when it comes to um, this whole accountability thing, we treat uh, the assembling of ourselves together, like the Bible says, we treat that like car insurance. And what I mean by that is... Um, when things start getting tight, the first thing to go. The first thing to go on your bill list is car insurance. It's car insurance. You like, man, I or life insurance, whatever. You know what? I'm gonna just take my chances on being okay. You know what I'm saying? I I I, I just take my chances on it, and that's what we do a lot of times, especially when I Christian. Well, we take our chances mm -hmm. on everything being okay. We take our chances on the okay, it'll be all right. Yeah. And, and I I can miss, or it's not a big deal, or I'm always dead anyway. So hey, man, you know what? A lot of times we do it. You know, if we got people if you got people that's faithful that's always there that you can all you know you can depend on and we tell them a lot of times hey you know what you take you could take a day that's fine we, yeah. we completely understand but it's it's for those that know they need it mm -hmm. it's for those that we know in the spirit because we're accountable for for people's souls according to the bible as a pastor or a layman or whatever your title is you're accountable for people's souls so you got to give an account to god for other people yeah and because we have to give an account to god for other people to have them not in the assembly or them isolating themselves that means they don't want wisdom they are they they don't want understanding mm -hmm. they don't want to they they don't want counsel they run or like the bible says they run from judge they run from wise judgment yeah you know i'm, I'm gonna say this on the flip side of that because i i am the one and I do it all the time in my house. I play devil's advocates when me and Pastor have having conversation. On the flip side of that, you have to want to be held accountable. You Absolutely. have to be open to being held accountable. accountable. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I know that uh, there are people in my corner who I know that um, they're not trying to gain anything from correcting me. Or they're not trying to, you know, uh, um, c gain control or yeah. just be controlling of me, you know, when they're correcting me. So I allow them the room. Absolutely. If they, if they, and I tell them, this is what I need from you. If you see me slipping, if you see me talking negatively, if you see me being negative, you see me, you know, slacking off from church and prayer, then I need for you to call me out. And I'm open to that. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So we have to be open to being held accountable Absolutely. because that's what's wrong in the body of Christ. People want to, there are people, Christians 
And I'm, yeah, there are Christians who want to hold other people accountable, to, but don't want to be held accountable. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? You can't do one and not allow the other one to be done in your life. Absolutely. You can't want for people to, to, to be okay with you holding them accountable, but then nobody can't tell you nothing. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? That's not how this works. It's not how any of this works. And, but <laughs> and I, would, I, would be, I would even go a step further as to saying, man, this is why it's so important that you evaluate. Uh, a lot of a lot of y'all, man. I'm just being honest. I know a lot of y'all ain't members of Impact, and I ain't saying Impact is the be all end all. But you need to start right now evaluating your church. You need to evaluate your pastor. You need to evaluate your leadership, not in a judgmental way, mm -hmm. but. If that pastor that you have or that leadership that you submitted yourself to, if they don't have any room to hold you accountable or you feel as though they are people just like you and who they I'm grown or whatever. If you feel like they're towards your leadership, then you might not. You might be a person without a pastor right now. Yeah, and the Bible says, how can they hear without a preacher? Yeah. Mm hmm. Yes, indeed. That's, and that's just the God honest truth, man. So you got you got to you got to check yourself, man. If you find yourself always making an excuse as to why you can't be there, mm -hmm. and if somebody from the church call you and say, "Hey, uh, hey, Miss Jeb Bible study, man, where were you? Uh, I was I was out." But this this is the one that gets me. Well, I paid my tithes. I ain't got to be there. Hey, man. Wait a minute. Yeah. It's not oh, just about you paying so you your tithes. So, a small piece of it. So you bought God. <laughs> you buying it. <laughs> man, you don't have enough money in your account and nobody else's account to bribe God. Now, there are some, and I'm you know, I'm not putting nobody's church down. There Absolutely. are some churches that as long as you pay your tithes, they can you kill us about yeah. so, if you, they, you know what yeah. I'm if that is If that is a church that you are a part of and they're... As long as you pay your tithes, they don't care if you're there or not, then you are probably in the wrong church. Yeah, you might want to check that. that's not what God has called yeah. us to do. You know what I'm saying? So, you need to get with you an assembly where they're holding you accountable mm. totally. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Totally. In our church, we find that, and this is just our truth, we'll hold people more accountable about being there than paying tithes. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? And that's just our truth, you know, because, you know, money is a touchy situation for some yeah. people, for a lot of people. So for us, we, we, we harp more on people being there yeah. and being, you know, held accountable for why they aren't there than paying their tithes. Absolutely. And, it's, and, it, and it might sound crazy, but uh, for the past five years, God has been paying all his bills. Absolutely. When it comes to our church. He's, been, he's paid every single bill. He's made sure that we had lights and we had everything that we need in order to make sure that our service flows like it needs mm -hmm. to. But here's the bigger thing, man. I, I know for sure, man, there have been times that words have went across, not even just from me, but from pastor and not even just from pastor, but just from a, 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 a spontaneous outburst of the Holy Spirit, just from a spontaneous outburst of the Holy Spirit. And you can't help. And it's just human nature. It, it is. And I'm not going to be hypocritical. You can't help sometimes, especially if you're accountable for people's soul, for saying, I wish such and such was here today. Yeah. Because I, I, I know what their situation is. <laughs> I know what they're going through. Yeah. I know what they're feeling. Mm -hmm. and, and I know that this could have helped them. And they're not here. Mm -hmm. And how many times has, has the, the, the last combination to your lock, the thing that's going to unlock whatever it is in your life, how many times has that number been called out in church and you weren't there? You got to be realistic. How, how many times has, has somebody called out the combination to the lock or the safe on your life and that's going to break the back of poverty, your health, your relationship, your marriage, whatever it is. How many times have the numbers to your combination lock been called out and you weren't there to get the numbers to unlock that stuff in your life? You don't know because you wasn't there. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely, and we do everything we can. Especially, I can like I said, I can't, can't account for everybody else's church. We try live streaming, we try to record everything and make sure that we got DVDs and CDs. But for a lot, a lot of times, that stuff is just taking up memory. Nobody actually gets it because a lot of times in our minds we think that we can remember it all or we got it. Mm -hmm. I'm a repetitious learner. I have to hear it over and over and over again and again. Oh, I'm sorry, but I, I'm about to start preaching. But anywho, <laughs> I'm not one of those people, man. You got to be careful, too. You, I'm not one of those people that I need positive af affirmation. I know that's some people's uh, love language or whatever, but I'm definitely not one of those people that need positive affirmation in order for me. I need to know what I'm doing wrong. Yeah. If I'm already good at it, why do I need to keep trying to fo work and focus on that? I can get better at it, yeah. But I need to know the things that I'm not good at or the things that I know I'm struggling with in order to get where I know I need to go because God is concerned with the totality of my life and not just the good portions. Mm -hmm. Now, he might use the good portions to build me up, 
to say, hey, look at look at what it is that you can do. But it's the things that we can do, probably the things that's holding us back. Or the things that we were not held accountable to is the things that's holding us back. So you gotta be you you gotta be honest and be honest in your evaluation of your life and yourself and your family and your kids and all that stuff and say, man, we need some sort of accountability. We need some place that we can go judgment free. But they, whatever they do, whatever, however they correct us, they correct us in love. Whatever they show us, they show us in love. But we need to be shown. Yes. We but absolutely not, need to be but shown. Not, ahead, not all, and that's just not the only area of accountability, oh, account, account, area where we need accountability. You know, we need accountability in our prayer life. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? We need accountability in our love walk. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We need accountability in speaking life. Absolutely. You know, there's more areas than just going to church where we need accountability. But the key point, the key thing that we have to do is evaluate the area that we're weak in. Absolutely. For some of us, getting to church and going to church is not an issue. Yeah. But praying at home is an issue. Yeah. So then you find you somebody to hold you accountable in that area. I Absolutely. need a prayer partner. Okay. I know you're strong in prayer. So I need for you. I need for us to talk at least once a day where we pray and I'm prompted to pray so I can continue to, so I can get stronger in that area. You know, I know um, praying is not my issue, but walking in love is my issue. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So I need to get somebody that's going to check me on yes, my love walk, You know what man. I'm saying? I, I mean, and, and that's just, that's just the truth, man. That's what you're saying. So it's it's true. You got to find, that's why you have to identify your problem areas. You got to find out what it is. You might, because you might be in church, but you might have the worst spirit mm. ever. Everybody trying to press in, and you the one that's just like, oh, oh well, hey, who's, who's that, Lauren? Or applying the word to everyday life so that growth takes place at increase. Amen. Yep. So, but that's the truth, man. You, so, I mean, it's just, it's, it's so strong, yeah. man. I don't, I can't even that's express. What I need. I'm slacking on my prayer. Amen. Well, we'll get you a prayer partner to me. Amen. I I'll be your prayer partner. I mean, that's what I wanted to say. That's what it kind of. It, it, I got I got so convicted. Um, he long winded in prayer. I, I do. So if, <laughs> if you ain't ready to go about an hour, you don't need me. I'm praying with my family from work lately. Hey Amen. That's awesome. That's hey awesome. Man. We but, need more of that though. We absolutely. need more prayer. But one of the things that I'm sorry, but I didn't mean to cut you off. But one of the things that got I, I got so convicted on this morning. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Pastor can tell you, and those are the members at Impact. We have a, a message board for our church that we have on on Facebook, but. I used to, every morning I would get up and put a scripture or something on there, like a thought for the day, and I would ask a question. That was actually my way of accountability for our church. That was actually my way of, and a lot of times people would see it, and you know, they open it up, and I've seen you seen it, so stop doing it. I, I know you read it. Was it just read? You read it. You open it up. They you seen it. They want to see the dialogue. Uh huh. Anywho, but <laughs> everybody's not a contributor. Everybody's yeah. not a preacher. <laughs> yo, yo, somebody gonna contribute. But here's the thing. But here's how, here's how I got convicted. I stopped doing it because I was like, ain't nobody paying no attention to this stuff. No way. They'll read it, but ain't, ain't nobody. Ain't, there's no feedback. And and he convicted me. Hold, hold on. Real quick. I'm sorry. Excuse me, y'all. We I'm, we parenting. Parenting don't stop. Kids are home. This is why this uh, uh, periscope has been tampered with. But here's the deal. Um, I didn't. I didn't do it because I was like, okay, man, people, people not really paying attention to it. Nobody's writing, or it's the same people giving feedback all the time. And so, you know, I just slack off on it. But God says, I hold you accountable for them. If you don't do your part, then it's not up to them to respond. It's up to you to do your part to hold them accountable. And so a lot of times because I'm sensitive to the spirit, I was like, okay, all right, I'll I do it. I got it. And I have to get back on it. But you can't let uh, people's facial expressions, yes. you can't let That's people's good. lack of participation or whatever stop you from holding them accountable. That's good. Because sometimes you can be assigned to people, God will release you. And I'm a living witness just recently, God will release you from people whenever it's time for you to be to release them. Mm -hmm. He knows when that when some people are um taking too much of your time because there are some people that just have that desire to I need to know you love me so let me do stupid stuff and see if you're gonna run and chase after me or whatever and then that's gonna be some kind of accountability but that ain't the case God will release you from those people when it's time to be released and he'll let you know it'll be definitive it won't be no uh, uh no no shakiness with it you'll know for sure that that's God and you'll know for sure it's time to release them yes but 
You can't you can't be in easily intimidated or 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 feared out of holding people accountable. And uh, too, I know Pastor Guy, I know you want to jump back in there, but you also too have to understand that um what else I getting ready to say? I forgot. I have no idea. <laughs> uh, I forgot. I mean, I'm, I'm just excited about this, man, because accountability, I feel like in my heart of heart, accountability is the thing that's stopping um, uh, good churches from being mega churches. Yep. I feel like accountability is the thing that's stopping good marriages from being great marriages. I feel like accountability is the reason why you, 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 you are uh, pr- thriving at being 100 there, but you never can get to the million. Hmm. Because it's, you have accountability issues. I have problems with people checking me or keeping me in check or, or whatever, man. That's why I said, hey, go ahead. We have to understand because when, when oftentimes we can get into the headspace that people are trying to control us. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And when and that's the trick of the enemy, especially when it's God or that God sent people. He's, you, you know without a shadow of a doubt. That this is the church that God has for you. This is where he wants you to be. And this is the pastors that he wants you to send up, sit Absolutely. up under. And these are the people that he's connected you to. But we allow, we leave the window open for the enemy to come in and make us think, oh, they're trying to control me. Yeah. What all they're trying to do is get you to what God has tried, is trying to get to you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? By holding you accountable so that you don't fall through the cracks. Because we allow a lot of Christians to fall through the cracks. And they miss yeah. everything that God has for them Absolutely. you know what i'm saying because the, the, this this whole accountability thing is a very touchy situation when it comes to a lot of people because it can be easily be misinterpreted or misinterpreted or misconstrued you know what i'm saying we have to not give away that's why my thing and when i pray or when i'm oh well i pray whenever i can is rebuking the enemy <laughs> from my mind yeah you know what I'm saying? I have to rebuke him from my mind because my mind can go from zero to a hundred Real quick, you know what I'm saying? And real I'll quick, be, <laughs> real, real I've, quick. I've been and thought something about somebody zero to that, real that quick. is so far from the truth, but sometimes we can allow that stuff to be reality, even though it's not the truth. And you gotta so, understand, man. Yeah. I'm so sorry, Go man. I'm, but you gotta understand too that you have been isolated. Yeah, you've been isolated. You come on, man. Be honest with yourself, man. You've been isolated. When you oh, have good. that kind of time, that's good. We'll go ahead and read it. What does it say? It says, "I know when I back up, I tell myself that I'm better off alone because of hurt." Absolutely, and that's and you have to. Yeah. You got to understand that, man. Mm-hmm. Jesus, to me, because you about to make me jump out this chair, man. <laughs> you about to make me jump out of this chair. The trick of the enemy. It absolutely is, man. You you got to understand, man. It, and it, it's like I said, you when you are isolated, it says you. See Seek your own desires. You're your own counsel. Yes. I can always make how I feel sound good to me. Yes, absolutely. I always can. Come absolutely. on, man, because you know you. Because I remember when such and such absolutely. did that to yeah. me. And I Come said on, man. Yeah. that I'm not going to be hurt Absolutely. No I'm going to stay in front of the crowd. Absolutely. Gonna, yeah. I hurt you before you hurt me. Yeah. And if it looked like I'm finna go back down that road, I ain't going to happen to me. Fool me once. Shame on you. Fool me. Man, get get that foolishness out of here, man. What The, the enemy was successful in his tactic. Ooh, he got you by yourself. Go ahead and read it, man. I can't, when you, know, I can't you are alone, stuff. you start telling your own stories and... They don't see anything else. Amen. You can always make it. You, I can dress up anything to make it sound good to me. Yes. I know what I like. I know but what you know I want. What? And that's the that's the good that's good because you can make it sound good to you, but mm. the enemy causes us to keep it to ourselves because he know how stupid it is. It sound, sound if you get people. it out. Yeah. <laughs> Once you expose it to the air, somebody gonna look at you and say, "What? Are you serious? <laughs> Did you, you really just say that? Wow. <laughs> And hey, what school you went to? <laughs> so he'll what get us to that? a place where he'll have us hoard all that stuff in. He like, you know, um, they not going to understand. Absolutely. Or, or you're made differently. You know, you're cut yeah. from a different uh, cloth. Yeah. You know? uh, are you, your, your anointing does not fit this crowd. <laughs> or you're, you're, man, that's a bunch of foolishness, man. Yeah. You got to be aware of the enemy and his tactics. You got to understand when he when you are being attacked. And it's, ain't, it, ain't, ain't it convenient? Ain't it? Yeah, I said it. <laughs> Ain't it convenient that every time he attacks you is when you find yourself getting closer to godly people? Wow. 
Ain't that convenient. <laughs> every time you, every time, to be honest, man, every time you find yourself getting attached, getting connected, yes. getting closer, ain't it convenient is that, that that's when every uh, possible conceivable thing can start happening in your life. And some of it, I'm not, I'm not saying that, uh, that, that God's will won't be done, but you got to recognize, okay, this happened. And okay, I, I wasn't at church this week. Okay. Yep. Then that happened. Okay. I wasn't at church this week, but that's justifiable. That happened. So I'm not. And before you know it, it snowballs. One of, one of my big, biggest character flaws is when it comes to my family. And it's just me being transparent, y'all. One of my biggest characters for this, baby. Oh, wow. I tell myself, you don't need the church to be anointed. Yeah, absolutely. Estimate. You don't. Know, you, 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 uh, that's what I'm saying. Again, we can make ourselves believe. Absolutely. Yeah. But what if you're, and, and it's just, and it's not pulling you out at all, um, Tamika, but. What your anointing wasn't meant for you to consume it to yourself. Yes. That anointing is supposed to be spread out. We just talked about this in Bible study last week when we talked about the vessel principle. Mm -hmm. your, your, the oil is poured into you that you might be able to pour it out. So that's how we encourage and motivate each other when the Bible talks about encouraging one another. When you pour out your oil because it's not meant for you. It's not meant As you're for pouring you. your oil, your other, others are pouring their Absolutely. oil on you. So and that's you, how we end up encouraging one another. And it's a continual another. flow of wow. oil. You, the more you <laughs> pour out, you pour into somebody else. God pours into you. You go pour into somebody else. And it's wow. continual, 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 continual. And this is why he wants you to be by yourself. Why would he anoint you to hold it to yourself? What kind of preacher or pastor do you know is anointed and he only preaches in the mirror <laughs> well, yeah. Whitney Houston if she was if she's anointed to be a singer but she only sung in the mirror why <laughs> when would she have ever made the millions you got you you, you just got to be you got to recognize that stuff man and, and and know that the enemy is there to trick you deceive and isolate you get you to yourself Make you make you uh, fathom all the thoughts in your head. Make it make it sound good to you, so he can keep you by yourself. Doubt, I have to look at it again. The doubt, I, doubt uh, Yeah, it was, it's the five D's actually. Divide. I might have to. I'm gonna have to talk. I'm gonna have to teach on that yes, again. The five D's of the enemy. The five, yeah, the five the five, the five D's, man. You gotta be you gotta be aware of that stuff, man. But Lord, isolation. Why that's that is the yeah isolation accountability man you you gotta have that in your life man you gotta we have, have to, um, somebody to check you man we have to stop being the fickle Christians absolutely you know what I'm saying the ones that scared you know I remember you know it was women in my church well whenever I did go to church in the Methodist church that why where you where you been I remember we had a choir director her name was Fiend. <laughs> we, her name was Fiend. Her name was Josephine, but everybody called her Fiend. And That's she rough. was mean. Fiend. And uh, if you didn't come to rehearsal, she as because she was over the youth choir, she would call your mama and be like, "Hey, where was you know your child? Why your child wasn't at rehearsal?" You, you must, you saying? must, you must be back on that stuff. <laughs> and she did not. <laughs> but we think that it's me, but. She just wanted so much more for us, and we didn't realize it. I mean, now I'm thankful because some of the songs that you guys sing at the hymnal parts, I know because we sung those songs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I could relate to them. Like, some of the stuff y'all do, I can't relate to because I wasn't in church like that. Yeah, you know we, I'm Baptist. Saying? I'm a recovering but Baptist. Pray, pray we, for me. We thought that she was just a mean lady, but she wanted so much more for us. She wrote her own obituary. You know what I'm saying? And in the obituary, she said, my precious angel, she had never called us angels before. My precious angels who have grown to be the most beautiful God-spirited adults or something like that. But we didn't know until the end that that's really, and it didn't click. You know what I'm saying? But we just thought she was being mean. Amen. She, I, she, I, didn't, she, didn't, uh, she didn't compromise. Nah. She didn't waver from. No, it was, you need to be here. And you going to be here if I got to come get you I, Hey, man, I, I thank God for every mean usher. <laughs> now, she, I mean, seriously, I, I, I've learned, I, I learned how to conduct myself mm. in any room, under any circumstance, with any group of people by the stuff that I learned in church and the people that I had holding me accountable. Hey, when you sit on this road, you got to sit this way. You can't do this. Spit your gum out. You can't. You know what I mean? And at the time, you think, man, people just be in the butt, man. Like, what's the big deal? I ain't, I'm chewing gum. I'm not putting it under the seat or, you know, I'm taking it. But 
in, in the long run, it helped me as an adult. It helped me. I can be in rooms amongst anybody and I'm confident in myself and I know how to conduct myself. And there's things that you learn from people holding you accountable. You got kids. You dare not let your kids just do whatever they want to do and, and never tell them they're wrong or never hold them accountable uh, for, for doing right. And that's the same way God looks at us. That's the same way your pastor sees you. It's not them trying to control you. And sometimes, in some <laughs> cases, you have to know when it's time to relinquish control and let somebody hold you accountable. Yep. I got to know. You got to know that, man. There's plenty of times, man, when I, I and I'm, I am a very, she sit next to me. She, and she lay in my bed every night. She know I'm headstrong. She know it take a lot to get me off my yeah, hey man. And once I get there in my head, it is very, very hard to knock me off the mark. And so I have to know when I'm I'm so into myself that I'm not listening to nobody. That's good. I gotta know that, man. Mm -hmm. And then you get to those points, man. There's been plenty of times, man. Here's the God honest truth. And it's just me being a being held, being absolutely honest and, and giving credit where credit is due. If I would have listened to my wife more in the beginning, we probably would be for much further along than we are right now. There are ideas that we have implemented uh, <laughs> lately that she told me four or five years ago that I was like, nah, this ain't going to work. And we started doing it and it worked. But when you get to that point where you, you're, not letting, you're not letting people talk to you or you feel like, hey, she ain't spiritual enough. And there's a lot of people, a lot of women in our church, a lot of women in other churches that, man, you, hey, man, start listening to your first lady, man. Start listening to your, that, that, that female voice in your, in your church, man, because you're going to need that eventually. You're going to need somebody that's gonna, that can hold you in check and say, hey, man, you know, uh, yeah, you got a husband, you got a good man, but you're going to mess around and lose him if you keep doing the stuff you're doing. You need people to hold you accountable. That is not optional. If you want to be better, if you want to be great at life, you need people or a system or a group or whatever to hold you accountable. Yes, Lord. Amen. Man, we could go on this all day. All day. Then all just, day. We've been on this periscope for 45 minutes. Did y'all know that? <laughs> <laughs> we could do this all day. But if you think this up, man, you need to be at Bible study tonight. What is we know mean? ourselves. A lot of times we want to be in the state we are in. Accountability makes us examine ourselves. Amen. It absolutely does. It does. It do. You got to check yourself. And it puts your truth in your face. Because uh. a lot of, we don't want to know our truth. I just want to be... Uh, who I fathomed in my head to be. <laughs> and, and, and here's how this actually works. Okay, because you know during Periscope, uh, the, the camera points right back at you. Yeah. So when the camera point back at you, I'm like, man, I didn't, I knew I could have combed my beard. That's, uh, that's not even lined up. And that's how God does. He puts your stuff back in your face so you can look at it and say, okay, ooh, that, ain't, that really ain't right. Oh, that's wrong. Oh, I could have did that. Oh, Lord. I ain't watched my face. Look at them. He put your stuff back in your face. Mm -hmm. Not to embarrass you, yep. but to give you an opportunity to fix it. A lot of us need to have a mirror, mirror on the wall type experience. Absolutely. <laughs> and you need to have one daily. Yes, indeed. You need to have one daily, as though. Often as possible. Yeah, man, because you gotta you gotta you gotta make sure that stuff checked. Man, again, y'all, if y'all think there's something, I dare you. I triple double dog dare you to make your way to Bible study tonight. Yes. We got we we are I think we, we are done, we done said most of the Bible study, huh? Oh, we, no. we haven't even we haven't even we just started Spanish peeling this Spanish. onion. Yeah, we just started peeling this onion. It's a lot deeper. We're yeah. still talking about isolation. We're still talking about accountability. Why is it so important? Why is he attacking you right now when it comes to accountability? Why is he doing everything he can now to get you keep you isolated? Uh, we're going deeper tonight. So uh, if you in Alexandria or near Alexandria or you got access to a computer or something along those lines, I don't know for sure if we live stream in the night. But if you in town, you need to be in the house. 2403 Harris Street, Alexandria, Louisiana. Make your way there tonight, 7 yeah. o'clock. Uh, you don't want to miss it, man. Um, we should, Yeah, we should be uh, live streaming if Danny there. I, we got a, that My cord broke. There, so. That cord oh. broke, so we got to order that cord again. So wow. we might or might not be live streaming, but uh, depending on how it goes. We can periscope it. Yeah, we might periscope so it. So I'll periscope it tonight. Yeah. <laughs> we going to have to put a, a battery pack on your phone or something because it drain the juice. Anywho, <laughs> we appreciate y'all, man. Thank y'all so much for, for, for tuning in and checking in and um, giving us these. Uh, I, I was going to say a few minutes, but it's been a lot. It's but been 45 I, minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for these 45 minutes. <laughs> hey, have you ever been watching a good movie? You never you never realize how much time went by. Yeah. You just caught up in the movie. So some stuff is needed. Yeah, I have 
not to work tonight. I absolutely will. I'll get somebody to um to, to hold my phone or find a position where we can put it into where it'll pick up everything. We got you, Mike. Yes indeed. One way or the other, man. You already know that, man. We got you, bro. So um So before we get out of here uh, in, in normal Pastor L periscope style, Pastor Ronnie style, we wanna go ahead and pray. Is that okay? You keep awesome. saying, is that okay? Did anybody... Okay, somebody please say it's okay. <laughs> you welcome, Mike. <laughs> hey, man. Because you always say, is that okay? Like somebody... If, if y'all start talking back on me to me on this Periscope, I ain't they doing another okay. one. <laughs> Jaleesha and Anthony said, okay. Well, okay. praise the Lord. Mike said, okay. Hey, man. <laughs> you want to pray with me, bro? Uh, you can pray. Man. All right, dear Lord, thank you so much. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for your word declares that you discipline those whom you love. Yes, Lord. You will not allow your people to be ignorant. That is yes, also Lord. in your word. And I thank you, God, thank you, that you don't allow us to be ignorant, Father, that you will hold us accountable, that you'll hold us in our place, make us be and do everything that you called us to be and do. Help us, Father, to just grow, get better, be everything you called us to be. Strengthen us in every area of weakness in our lives. Yes, Help Lord. us to be the best people we can possibly be for yes, your God. glory. We thank you. Thank we you. love you. Thank and I believe by faith that your word this morning fell on good ground. Yes, God. Have your way in thank our you, lives Lord. even right now. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, Jesus name. Amen. amen. Right on. Amen. Did y'all see my kids running by? No, they didn't. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, thank y'all for these few minutes. Um, hope prayer, apply uh, what we've talked about this morning to your life today. Amen. Um, try to do an evaluation of yourself. Uh, Absolutely. Not, now, not an evaluation that's going to take away or get you fired from your job. Don't be a professional <laughs> finger pointer. We always say that in church. We are, this ain't the time for professional finger pointers. Amen. Don't I know somebody. No, hey amen. Use this as an accountability check for yourself, man. Me, me first. Yeah, absolutely. First, uh, my hey, how, how does this work for me? How do I get better with this, man? So... Uh, we love y'all so much, man. I thank God for holding us accountable. That way we can hold y'all accountable. That Amen. way we can all be better people. Yes, Lord. So we rolling. Yes, God. Uh, you want to, you got anything else? Are you finished? Have a you great good? day on purpose and purpose. And I love you like only Pastor L can. Peace. LaShonda, you need to get to impact. She said, I isolate a lot. Who? I'm going to have to start calling you LaShonda. I know, right? You act like <laughs> Nagat is a long way away. <laughs> <laughs> I love y'all. <laughs> hashtag, I'm an impact toy. Hashtag, it's bigger than me. Hashtag, moving forward. Hashtag, no review mirrors. Hashtag, this is worth fighting for. Hashtag, one in a million. And the biggest hashtag of them all. Don't just live. Make an impact. Right on. <laughs> It'd be later. It'd be later. No, seriously. It'd be, It'd be later. later. <laughs>